G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. Today I'm making a video on accessories for the car, for the Model 3. And I think a lot of these accessories will be applicable to the Model Y, but the purpose of the accessories will be the same. Um, yeah, they might just look a little bit different. So I want to, wanted to make this video because we've got Christmas coming up. Uh, I'm about to go away on uh, a holiday. Um, we're taking the family, or we're going on a family holiday to Thailand. We're going to Phuket for a couple of weeks. We haven't had a holiday for a long time, so we've been looking forward to this. And um, COVID ruined our last holiday plans. But yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. So I'm going to be out of action for two weeks. Um, I won't be doing any videos. So I just wanted to squeeze in a couple of videos before I go away. And because we're coming up close to Christmas, I wanted to, to get this accessory one done because there's a lot of useless accessories out there. Um, I'll show you what I bought and what I've got for this car. Um, I'll explain some of the things I haven't bought and why. And yeah, hopefully I don't miss anything. I've got a little list here to go through. So there's quite a few little small accessories that I've bought for the car and they really just improve your experience. And um, yeah, I'm a, a little bit of a neat freak, so I like to have everything in its place. So um, some of the accessories I've got uh, have, have made that made that a lot easier. Um, so we'll go through that. We what we might do is start on the outside of the car, and then um, yeah, have a look around, um, see what I've done externally, and then we'll have a look at a couple of things in, inside the car, and then yeah maybe at a different location i might film some others because I'll, I'll need it to be dark to to show you things like the boot lights and and stuff like that so yeah most of this stuff I, i've had a lot of use out of so yeah it, 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 it's great just to show you what what is worth getting and what isn't and a lot of it is a personal preference so there's a lot of things I'm comfortable living with in this car. Uh, one of the things is like the wood grain, the fake wood grain in the interior. I mean, that just that just blends in with the background um, for me these days. So once you've owned it for a while, I thought that was a big deal. I thought one of the first accessories I was going to buy was something to cover that up because I really didn't like it. And yeah, once you've owned the car for a while, you, you sort of get used to it and that brown color really just breaks up the, the amount of gray and black in this interior. So I, I think um, it's sort of grown on me. So um, I, haven't, I haven't covered that up, um, but you may not like that and want to cover it up. So I'm not saying don't do it. I just haven't felt the need to. So um, anyway, let's go for a walk around the car and, and have a look from there. All right, well, let's start by looking in the frunk and uh, what I keep in the frunk and uh, just some things in that area. And we can start from the front of the car and work our way to the back. To begin with, I'll tell you what I don't have, and that is a powered frunk. So this is a 2021 model uh, Standard Range Plus. Um, it is the one with the heat pump LFP battery. And the heat pump uh, in turn meant a very small frunk compared to the older Standard Range Plus. And you can see here that uh, to accommodate a lot of that, that uh, the circuitry or hosing or heat pump and all that um, had to eat into the frunk space. So uh, you can see here there's this big strip here. I think with the older frunk that was, that was all extra space and I think it was a bit deeper as well. So it's not a very deep frunk in this car. So. I really, you know, the only thing I use it for is keeping charge cables, so we'll quickly run through that in a second. But yeah, no powered frunk, I really don't think it's worth it for this tiny, tiny little little frunk here. Occasionally I feel like it would be great, but that's just when I'm feeling a little bit lazy. So it's not a necessity. So um, I don't have any LED lighting for here as well, no LED strips and things, really just because I'm not using the front much at all. Um, I've just, uh, I've left all the cables in here from when I did the Universal Mobile Connector uh, video. Um, so that came with my car. Uh, that might be an accessory you want to buy. Have a look at my UMC video and you'll see whether that's worth getting for you. Um, you can have a look here. I keep one of these starters. Now I had this before I got the car. Um, I started to hear of people having issues with the 12 volt lead acid battery and that's what my car 
my car has the 12 volt you can see the lead acid battery under there um, I don't have the 12 volt LFP battery um, so I've got a little bit a little bit concerned about getting that 12 volt battery issue my car is 18 months old now and um, just in case I had it anyway I didn't buy it especially for this but I, I keep the little 12 volt starter charger one thing with them you got to remember to keep them charged um, and I'm a little bit funny about leaving that sort of stuff in a hot car too so I think in summer I might I might just take it out I sort of had a bit of a moment and I thought wow what if I have that 12 volt battery issue and I I need to sort of get the car going but anyway <coughs> That's maybe for another video, but I've got that in here at the moment. I've got all the tails that I had for my uh, UMC video. Um, but underneath all of this, I have a frunk liner. Now I think this really just protects all this hard plastic from getting scratched. Um, that's rough, but it is quite slippery. So this just stops things from slipping and sliding around and just, yeah, when you go to sell the car, um, I, I think that just helps protect things and can keeps the car and keeps the, the hard plastic in good condition. So this is my Type 2 to Type 2 cable. Now you will need this. Um, this is great for public charging. So in the shopping centre car parks and things, a lot of the time issues with those public chargers are to do with the cables. Now this will, this car only charges at, uh, the quickest this car can charge is 11 kilowatts, but I bought the 22 kilowatt capable cable because I just don't know what cars I'm going to have in the future and I'll probably hang on to this instead of selling it with the car. So I got the better cable and I thought, look, it's a bit more robust as well um, and can probably take a bit of kicking around uh, in here. So type 2 to type 2. EVSE I got that from. They're not the only place selling cables but they are great guys to deal with and they're very close to my work. I'm here at Silverwater and they're 10 minute drive away so um, that was that was one of the reasons I use them and super friendly guys. Um, EVSE.com.au um, yeah I'm not sponsored by them or anything. <laughs> Just just um you know i bought some you know had great customer service from them so um comes with all the documentation as well i've got a nice bag here i've been a bit lazy not putting the cable back into it um so but it, yeah nice little little bag there to keep everything nice and tidy the other adapter i have um, is a type 1 to type 2 so some public chargers still have a type 1 plug so you would plug the type 1 plug into this end and then this plugs into the charge port of the car so i bought one of them as well i've never actually needed to use it because most of the chargers i've used um, have been type 2 no problem um, but i've got it there just in case so when you're traveling you want as many options as possible and you can see here so these are the charging tails to go and plug into the UMC um, what else we got in here we have these useless hooks so I bought these as <laughs> shopping bag hooks they were pretty cheap it was a bit of a filler for an order I had from um, one of the places that's about it for the front so yeah don't bother with those shopping bag hooks very useless and this isn't great for fitting shopping in anyway it's too shallow um, you just can't fit you try and fit a shopping bag in here you end up crushing your milk container so um, anyway that's that's it for the for the front area there we'll close that up oh just remembered underneath here I got this little um, sort of shield here so you can get leaves and things falling in and they will go down and then into the ducting that goes into the cabin so you don't want to be getting leaves and crap down through there blocking up your cabin filters so I've got this it hasn't really caused me any dramas I was a bit worried about creating a restriction here by by putting this little sort of a diffuser filter here you can get uh, the, the, the paper type filters or HEPA filters to fit in here little mini HEPA filters but I don't know, I'd be worried about them restricting airflow. This one here doesn't really restrict the airflow that much, but it stops the bigger leaves and things getting in. But I also want to do a video where I just take this whole front section out and I'll show you what's underneath. Um, I haven't actually done that yet, and um, just out of curiosity, I'd love to have a look through there. Behind this little recovery point door,
you can get it open. I have hidden in behind this electrical tape, I've hidden a little 12 volt battery. And if you bridge that across these two wires, the frunk will open up. Now I'll do a separate video on that, I think, uh, just on its own and show you how that works and what sort of battery it is, but that's hidden in behind there as well. So now, as far as the externals of the car, I got a ceramic coating put on the paint of the car because uh, Tesla weren't, aren't, aren't renowned for good paint work. So I thought it, it probably isn't a bad idea to get the ceramic coating put on. I got it done as a package with my window tints. So I got the, uh, the front and I got the rear tinted as well. Um, I got an extra sort of UV uh, thing here. The, the tint place showed me, uh, they did a test and it, it actually wasn't, you know, the, the privacy glass that comes on the back isn't actually very great at filtering UV light. So I actually got a lighter film put on the back and a darker film, um, the lighter film because it already had the privacy glass so I got it just it's, it was a really really light tint with an extra sort of a UV uh, protection on it um, now you can see normally you get the car and the front windows have no tint and it's just the rear window has the privacy glass the roof is tinted down to this point here you can see and then it's just clear glass here um, some window tinting places don't like to touch the back here because the, the water they use when they apply or the soapy water or whatever they use when they apply the tint can run down and, and damage some electronics down the back here. So some places don't like to do that. I got it done as a package. I think it was about 1200 bucks for the ceramic coating and the window tints all together. Um, they even ceramic coated my wheels, which I have nicely scuffed up. <laughs> On the gutter this car i'm just not used to it i've, I've had four-wheel drives and suvs before this car where you don't really have to worry too much about that you've got massive tires and they they tend to hit the gutter more than your rim so i'm still getting used to that now when i had my when i had the car crash into the side of me i had the doors replaced um, the front quarter panel wasn't replaced but the rear quarter was as well so they don't have the ceramic coating now until I had that done I thought the ceramic coating was a bit of a snake oil sort of thing um, wasn't really you know thought wow have I wasted my money um, but you know it, it, after I had the ceramic coating done it did give it a bit of a deeper shine and you do sort of wonder whether that is just at that time but the deeper shine continued the car was pretty easy to wash um, and you know now i haven't appreciated it fully until i had this area done so once it had the new doors put on the rear quarter there is no ceramic coating on that part of the car and when i wash the car you can definitely feel a lot more friction when you're polishing or washing the car over this area so i definitely think the ceramic coating is worth getting done but just make sure you're not paying an absolute fortune for it um, and now I don't have any extra paint protection film around the car. I do have a strip to go here on the, on the bumper to protect when you're loading and unloading the car, but I haven't fitted it yet. Um, so that's the outside of the car. Oh, what I did, I got the black decals to, I'm not a big fan of Chrome. Um, so I basically, Chrome deleted most of my Tesla badges. So the front and the rear, I got some black black decals to put over the top and I quite like it um, you still get a little chrome edge you can still see the T um, but it just hides that chrome I really hate the chrome the other thing accessory I got was the roof racks roof racks are great they're a actually a Yakima roof rack and you need to be really really careful when you fit these there is a j-shaped um, hook that goes in between the glass and the, the framework of the car uh, and you need to be really really careful you need to make sure that is accurately in position or you can crack your glass roof and the other thing is do not attempt it unless you have a torque wrench that can go down to three newton meters or less um, which is really not much more than finger tight 
and you need to be super, super careful fitting these roof racks. Now, I've, I've done it a couple of times now. I've taken mine on and off many times, and I just leave them on there now, to be honest. Um, I've realized they don't affect your economy much at all. Um, it's barely noticeable. Um, I've got the bike rack on there at the moment. I did a test the other day. I'll be making a separate video. I had my bike on the top of the car and I did a freeway drive out of Sydney and went up to the Central Coast. So I had a look at what the economy was like with the bike rack, uh, with the bike actually on the roof. So creating a bit of drag. So um, look out for that video. I'll be making that soon. Um, that's about it for the outside. Ah, the wheels, I took, um, the, I've got the aero, yeah, I took the aero caps off. I'm not a huge fan of those. You've got these nice mag wheels underneath. Um, I've got the aero cap uh, kit. So that comes with a plug here with the Tesla logo and I've got rid of the chrome on there as well. And just some little lug nut covers, uh, wheel nut covers. Um, what I do have, and I'm gonna do on a separate video, I actually bought these covers. Uh, let's have a quick look. I don't wanna spend too much time on this. I actually bought these covers to to go on. Now, I only just got them. I haven't had a chance to look, but they're sort of a mixture between the um, induction wheels and the turbine wheels, the big 20-inch ones you can get. So I thought I'd just buy these and see what they're like. I got these from Tesseries. This is the other tool you need. These are impossible to get those center caps off without a suction tool like that. So this just suction suction pulls them out. Um, we just need to line up the valve stem. Okay, what do you think of that? I think they look quite good. I was a bit worried they'd be a bit uh, trying to look like, uh, make this look like a performance car. But what they actually do is they hide the rim damage. So I've got a bit of rim damage here and they go right to the edge, which is the main reason that I bought them because it can hide that real damage. Um, so uh, yeah, I quite, you know, I quite like the look of it. I think it would look much better with a nice uh, shiny tire with some tire black on it, but um, yeah, I quite like the look of it, but I'll do a separate video on that and just show you how to, how to set them up and fit them to the car. There's a little bit of, a couple little things to be careful of. All right, so let's have a look in the boot. So what have I got here? We've got a boot liner. Um, that's a must. I've always had boot liners in cars and it saves the carpet. So if you spilt some liquid and things here, look at the nice big edges on here uh, that, that can uh, protect your carpet. So we've got, um, yeah, that's, that's great. That was from uh, Tasmanian as well in the, in the US. Um, I've got a Tasmanian cooler here as well. It's quite good. It's a bit overpriced really for what it is. Um, it's quite good. I just want to skim over these things here because each one of these I could almost do uh, a, a, a separate video for. Um, we'll put them in and talk about them in a sec. So yeah, we've got a, a couple of things here. I've got the camping mattress. So what I might do is, uh, that's going to be a separate video anyway, but I will quickly uh, set that up and insert a video here somewhere just showing you that all set up in the car and what it looks like. Um, the only trouble with these, I got this from Tesseries, there's a few places, there's Test Camp, there's whatever. The thing you need to remember is they come with really, really poor quality memory foam. So that's this yellowy looking horrible stuff um, that was actually in in this camping mattress so it's not a very good quality memory foam it just feels like normal foam i mean it is memory foam but it's not very nice to lie on so what i did was i bought some better quality memory foam and if you have a look at it side by side with this one you can see it's a bit thicker but it still fits into the cover of the mattress. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video on that, so that's, I won't spend too long on that, but that's something to be wary of. They're very expensive, and if you've gotta go putting new foam in them um, to make them comfortable, it is a great thing though. So I'll show you that all set up in, the, in another video.
Now this Tasmanian cooler actually fits into this uh, floor space here. So um, what we've got here, that is my tow hitch um, stuff, which I'll talk about in a sec. I have a, basically a jack kit. And I will put links to this stuff as well. Now inside this kit, I have some gloves. There is a scissor jack, a wheel brace with some sockets. Um, these jack pads are a must. Um, you really don't have a safe point to jack under the car without them. Um, they're, they're pretty uh, self-explanatory. There's a point for them under four points uh, underneath the car. So around this area here, you will feel a big hole and you insert the jack pad up in there and that is your jacking point for the car. It's the only safe jacking points. If you try and jack the car up anywhere else, you could punch up through the battery and cause some very, very expensive damage. So um, that's that. And I've just got some tie down straps and things here. So once again, I've got a, a boot liner in there. But if we look at this cooler bag, You can see it fits, it's not absolutely flush because I've got a couple of little things down in there, but you know, that can fit under the floor there quite easily. Nice and hidden away. If you're going away on a long trip, you could have some cold drinks and things in there or some meat or whatever um, that you want to store away. And you can see there it's nice under the floor. It makes good use of that um, under floor storage. So um, that's quite good. One thing that surprised me, these Model 3s are quite roomy in the back. Um, if you look up in mine as well, I don't have that horrible metal look up in here. I've got a cover for that. They sell them as soundproof covers, but I got it more for just the aesthetics. Um, it may end up being a little bit hard to see in this lighting, but um, it gives a nice soft feel to there. There's no sharp metal edges anymore. Um, you know, if you're packing this full and you brush yourself against some of those sharp edges there, it can be dangerous. So I think it's more a cosmetic thing, aesthetic thing, and just protects you with those sharp edges in the metal up there. I think it's well worth it. Um, I've also got a shopping bag hook up here that just screws onto an existing, um, an existing uh, bolt that's sticking out there. Um, that's quite good if you can see that. Um, what I also did, and I'll need to show you a separate video, is I upgraded the lights in the boot here. So I've got some brighter lights. The, the lights that the car comes with are very dull, but be very, very careful about um, upgrading your lights in the car, because if you upgrade the ones in the door, I'm going to slip in a separate video here where I am um, popping one of those lights, and I'll tell you what to be very, very careful about. Just a word of warning, this is the driver's side puddle light. These are the lights under your doors that turn on when you open the door. If you disconnect them, the windows close and the car turns off. It thinks the door has closed. So if you put a dodgy one of these on that hasn't been made to the right specifications to draw the correct current, you can cause issues with your window opening and closing and it will stop you turning on your remote climate. Uh, that's how I discovered I had a faulty one. So I've turned, reverted back to the standard lights and it's safer to just do that. And they work just fine. So that's, um, the other thing I did here was I fitted some um, stick on covers here. They're metal covers just to protect the plastic here uh, from getting all scratched up when you're loading things in and out. They've been great, but they do have some sharp edges on them here that you need to be really careful of. Things can get caught, but they work well as protectors and they, they fit really well. Um, some other things I have here, that's just a bike tool <laughs> I've kept in here. Now I bought one of these Tesla pumps. So um, right back at the beginning, they don't actually offer them for the Model 3 anymore. Now this is a pump and a sealant unit all in one. Now the reason they don't offer them for the Model 3 is because there is some sound deadening foam in the Model 3 tyres that uh, stops this, this foam from plugging up punctures um, or stops this liquid, liquid foam from, from sealing up punctures, uh, puncture repair liquid. But 
some point down the track I'm going to replace the tyres on this car and I won't bother with the sound deadening foam. I don't honestly think that it makes that much difference. When I had my accident, um, they ended up putting a standard tyre on the back here when that got replaced. Um, and to be honest, I haven't noticed that being any noisier. And um, they're just tyres, you're going to replace them every couple of years anyway. So I think definitely that's going to be useful. And I think really, even just for the pump, you don't necessarily have to have a Tesla one. You can get some car portable pumps. Um, I think it's definitely worth having one of those when you don't have a spare tyre. Um, but what I've got for really bad scenarios, you've also always got Tesla roadside service. I have a couple of puncture repair kits in here. I have the slime um, tire repair kit and you know it, it basically comes with um, I think they, they call them little yeah, little little tire plug things here that um, rubber plugs so you, you've got a couple of tools so you've got a reamer to clean the hole out and then you put these plugs in with the rubber cement and that plugs up your hole so I'll keep that in here for sort of worst case scenarios where it's not exactly a slow leak I've also got another one I got sucked in and bought it's called the tire plugger that's a bit of a different setup it's got a gun that shoots it in and it's got a mushroomed head on it that sits on the inside so I, I just keep them for emergencies um, just as a just in case thing you might have seen this this is a nice tow hitch I've got on my car this is called a stealth hitch and I got this from EV Stealth Solutions I'll put a link to the, these guys speak to Michael there he's quite great here in Sydney they use Chatswood Prestige Smash Repairs to to fit the tow bars and they, they're, they're, they're all fantastic guys to deal with um, great so this is the hitch you can see here now it fits in behind your bumper bar here and bolts to the back of the chassis of the car and then you end up with this hitch uh, hitch point poking up from underneath the car I know in Europe they rate these cars for a thousand kilogram towing um, but here in Australia and I think the US and a lot of other places they don't actually Tesla don't haven't approved the car for towing um, this tow hitch is approved for a thousand kilograms I use it for bike racks only not towing but if you did want to use it for towing there's nothing stopping you um, just I think you would probably run into issues if you had driveline problems with your car later on with Tesla let me just grab out here so it even comes with the six or seven pin plug uh, trailer plug for doing your lights now I mount a bike rack on here which you would have seen some photos that I have done I don't use a tow ball hitch for that it has a square receiver as well as an option instead of the tongue uh, tongue and ball set up here the only trouble is you won't be leaving this on all the time you have very very low ground clearance so coming out of driveways and things that will scrub so it's nice to be able to take that off and and tuck it out of the way what I might do is quickly cut the video and show you what it looks like with that out and um, and I'll, I'll just slip in a quick video here I thought I might get a good view of the roof the glass roof shades now I bought an aftermarket shade and soon regretted it it didn't actually fit very well um, and I ended up buying the Tesla ones now the Tesla original ones you have these little clips on here I don't know if you can see that very well or not um, I might show you when I when I take it I'll take it right out let's take it outside yeah, you should be able to see that now they have these little clips that tuck under the roof lining and help hold it in place the aftermarket ones those clips are pretty flimsy they break they fall off and uh, they're not that great quality and um, but the one good thing that my aftermarket one came with is this little reflective cover the roof glass in the Tesla you can see nice and dark look out the front and then look up through here it's um, great at heat shielding um, when the sun is shining through you don't feel much heat directly on you but the glass itself heats up and then that then radiates the heat through so you're not actually getting the heat from the direct sunlight but you're getting the heat from the hot glass just above your head so in the middle of summer having these um, sun shades is great and remember it's not to shield you from the direct sunlight it's to shield you from that hot glass sitting above your head 
Now the other bonus about the the um, the Tesla ones is they just fit a lot better and for the rear I'll jump around through the front for the rear if you have a look that sunshade goes all the way down and fills up the whole back windscreen a lot of the aftermarket ones finish halfway down about that point and then don't cover the rest of the window um, and a lot of them they have a bit of a funny shape um, this one really good quality mesh um, yeah I don't know they, they are expensive the Tesla genuine ones but I think they're well worth the money um, and they're often out of stock but definitely just having that um, go right down to the back and see there goes right down to the back there and gives you covers that whole back back wind um, uh, glass roof all right so well worth getting those now in the front I've got a couple of these I'm gonna do a separate video this is a HEPA charcoal filters for the cabin filters which are located underneath here and I'll do a separate video showing you because the instructions on the Tesla website are uh, for uh, left-hand drive cars so there's a couple of things you need to be careful of um, with this but yeah I'll go through that in another video while I'm down here I may as well show you the sports pedal covers or the performance pedal covers that I've got here um, I actually quite like these over the standard pedal because you, you just really have a, a black plastic pedal here um, without a rubber cover I like the feel of the rubber grippiness and I like the look too so there's an aesthetic reason for these and also a feel you know with your foot on here having some rubber to, to, to push on is is much better um, this one did have a rubber cover anyway it's more aesthetics for the brake pedal and you actually don't use the brake pedal very often anyway you can sort of see I've just worn a bit of uh, the edge of my shoe rubbing on this part of the pedal okay I also have a front windscreen cover that um, unfolds like that uh, and then I will uh, cut to that being fitted okay that's all fitted now and you can see the sun visors hold it in place here this one has little flaps coming out that, that go right into the corners of the windshield and um, this was just an Amazon one I think from memory I'll put links to a lot of these products in the descript video description this one also hooks around the rear vision mirror and gives you a bit of privacy there um, yeah this this is quite good and it's a must if you live in a hot country like Australia okay the next thing I'll talk to you about is the mount so I bought an old Android phone because scan my Tesla works better on Android phones uh, that's just an old Motorola one it was hundred and something dollars pretty cheap but it runs scan my Tesla I have a gravity mount for that it's this Temi Temi brand it's just a gravity mount you can see how it works there it fits into and clips into the air vent you can see here we'll take it out the only issue with this is it leaves a bit of a dent in that soft padded section and um, yeah it's it's not too bad I mean I don't plan on removing this very often that just stays in place quite good nice solid ball mount on it um, works really well been pretty pretty happy with that and it gives you a little opening at the bottom here to plug your charger into we have what else have we got here we have a screen protector this is the Moshi brand and this is quite good it's easy to fit and I don't know if I can show you here you can sort of see the difference between the glare and not glare you can sort of see some reflections there let that go back up on um, yeah it's quite good really good I think it's definitely worth having something like that on here um, this this Moshi brand um, Moshi brand this one can be taken off and you can actually just wash it all down with water and put it back on um, it's quite good it's not like a glue or a sticky tape on the back um, it's, it's just the way they do the surface and it, it sticks to, to smooth surfaces so um, this is something I think would probably just last the life of the car I haven't had any issues with this the touchscreen still works with it fitted um, it's, it's quite good now just while we're looking on this angle I don't feel the need to have a swivel screen uh, I think this screen is quite easily viewed from any angle 
and you don't want to be able to turn it away from the driver and have the passenger you know you want to be able to see especially the speed part here of your screen all the time and that sort of goes the same with having these little displays in here why would you have a display in here that's often hidden by your hands or the steering wheel when you've got this place here you can quite clearly see your speed anytime so really really easy nice big digits nice good contrast with the white background and a lot of cars a lot of french cars and things have the speedos in the middle of the dash here anyway where they're easily visible and i mean looking here i mean look down here or there you've got things in the way here that's a nice clear view and you soon get very very used to that and realize you don't need these little aftermarket displays to go here they're just not needed and some of those ones you've got to be careful because they can sort of mess around with the can bus system in the car so you just need to be super careful with what accessories you fit um, i've had the car 18 months now i haven't missed it i actually get into other cars and find it really really difficult to read the the, the speedo in there this is this is really really clear no problems you don't need to worry about that uh what else what else what else oh a little um trays here center console trays so you can see i just keep my sunglasses there no problem i've got that i've got my garage remotes and it's easy just to flick uh, this back i've got a charging cord hanging out there at the moment but yeah this is nice and easy so this is just a tray insert um, you can get the tesla ones or buy some aftermarket ones on amazon no problem they're all pretty good they all just sit in there there's a ledge for that to, to sit on so i can slide back and forth um, keep the game controls down in there it's quite a deep thing you've got a lot of storage in this part um, underneath here um, i didn't bother getting any storage trays for in this section just that storage tray i bought this useless little hidden compartment i don't know I bought it, fitted it, it was quite easy um, to fit, it just sticks in place and it's great, does what it says it will do, it's a nice, but I haven't, you put something in there and it rattles around in the hard plastic, um, it's probably something you can give a miss, I'd much rather have the, the headspace here to put something taller into this storage thing here, um, yeah, a bit of a useless thing. So what else we have, oh the drinks, yes so initially this comes for nice big american size cups to fit into now this keep cup is quite good but if you have a taller coffee mug it can tend to just move around and not get supported by these drink holders so this is one actually one of the first accessories i bought it's got these little spring-loaded flaps um, that that push in there that just clips in place and um no no problem Right, just one other thing I forgot to mention, um, the Scan My Tesla adapter, the OBD Link MX adapter, and the harness adapter to tap into the CAN bus circuit. So if you run back to the first video I ever posted on my channel, you'll find everything you need for that one. All right guys, hopefully that was worthwhile and um, yeah, tried to make it as quick as possible, so sorry I was talking quite fast through some of that. Uh, trying to make this video short, there was a lot to cover. Um, hopefully that's helped you uh, decide what accessories you might like uh, and, and what you, you know, may not now like. Uh, now I've explained to you what they're like. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully, yeah, you got something out of that and if i don't make a video before then have a nice christmas and enjoy the break if you're getting one